base because it's harder to heat up. This will get hotter easier. It does have to get red hot for it to work. Um, this is called annealing. It just makes sure that the, um, it's like some scientific process, but it just makes the copper softer. It works for most metals. This is going to take a really long time. Right, we got a few minutes. <laughs> yeah. But um, you do this a couple times during the process, just so that the copper, like I said, bends easier and um, textures are easier. Do you want to talk a little bit about, in the end, how you're going to add patina that would change um, it I don't know if you guys can see right now, but like sometimes the fire changes colors, and you can see the copper is different colors. There's a, diff there's a certain kind of like timing and stuff with the torch. When the copper is clean, you can get the rainbowy effect on it. It's not really visible, but what kind of effect do you call it? It's like a unicorn kind of patina. Okay. It's like that like oil slick kind of color. Set up, but yeah, I'll figure yeah. it out. <laughs> okay, so I tend to keep one end open just so water can get out and stuff. So I have two different blocks here so that I have something to hit up against. I might end up using this. But I'm just going to flatten it first. I'm just going to bend. So that way you just have like a base kind of flatness. And then I'm just going to use like, there's different ways of getting this vein in it, but I'm just going to do the same thing here. So you just hit like certain areas. Gotta keep kind of it, it has to stay up. This is kind of difficult because these are like they slide, but at this point, you're just finding the veins. And so a vein is really just a place where the air is still trapped yeah, in that little Yeah, it's called air chasing. Like yeah. So it's a really easy technique as long as you can like, you know, keep your veins um, elevated, which isn't always super easy. to like get the ends of the veins and stuff otherwise they don't become defined at this point you're going to start seeing the pattern so it goes back and forth so this is when it becomes really crucial to follow that otherwise you mess up your veins look what you want to do. So I'm just going to go back in with the um, punch. So it's really just this 
sideways impact that squishes the vein down, makes it more tight, and really with bigger with pipes like this, it's a lot easier to just do something like that. But with bigger pipes like this one, you can do it with, and then I have like really really big pipes like that. So you could really so you can with. really um, like get center vein like circles and stuff in your yeah. veins. So it depends on your size pipe, but this is a really boring. something but it's safer do it this way you don't like ruin anything and there's still plenty of softness left. yeah so on the big point of doing that not only does it make it easier but once copper gets hard it breaks so you got to make sure you don't do that which I just did, the tighter you're going to get your vein. So I'm not sure how tight these veins are going to get without like a double-sided block. I'll try. So like I said, I'm just going to hit this one last time to really do what, the, what I can with this thing. Do you think like the back end of the rivet hammer would be like too long and like, flat edge? Like you, like you don't have enough of it. You have too much of a curve for that to work. Or they um, use a chasing hammer. Chasing hammers work really nicely, actually, if you don't hit it too hard because I broke right. one one time. But the copper surface tends to be smooth, so it doesn't look really bad. So 
I'm just gonna go with that. Um, I'm gonna buff it in the other room. And that just gets the bar scale up. Yeah, so. I'll take my fingers off when I pass. Yeah, so it's just. actually making it. Enough is off right now. I'm just gonna try not to burn myself. <laughs> yeah, I just want to get everything. Oh, that's fun. And there's uh, most times I do like I'm gonna tell them, but I do like to texture the insides more. Okay. But okay. that'll do for now. See, but it's shinier now. Usually I'd use like a wire wheel, so it would get all the black off, so the patina really shows up. But um. What is shiny will get rainbowy, whatever. It's actually hot right now, not like super hot, but it's warm to the touch. So that makes the patina go on easier. I'm just gonna rest it for this and um, see if I can do it. This is more of a running process because if you hold it on, you can't really see the copper transitioning. So right now, it, like, it starts off as an orange color. And it should get like purpley, pink, tends to go like more towards pink. I learned that different parts of the flame make different colors it does. too. And the hotter gas makes different colors easier. Yeah. And then I was experimenting with dunking it and heating it again right away and dunking it and yeah. heating it again so the water was cooling and heating it really fast and that made some interesting things happen too. Like I said, the shinier parts are gonna get the patina easier. There's one spot right now I can really see. Um, you can always buff it again if you don't like what happens. And how do you treat yours when you're all done? I to preserve the patina. Um, I like to use a nano coating. Oh, that one that your dad like invented or yeah, whatever. Yeah, or okay. he, he works for it. Yeah. yeah. But um, I do use Krylon when we don't have that. I find Carlon takes out a lot of the color, like I end up using fingernail polish instead. Okay, so we pickled it in the pickling solution. A pickling solution is a kind of acid that will remove fire scale. So you can make your own pickling solution at home with like vinegar, salt, water, that kind of stuff. Um, but you can also... Yeah. No, it's like, well, it's, like an acid. it's an acid, which is what pickling process is. But it's it's not actually for pickling food, it's yeah. just like an acid, so. I mean, um, as you guys have seen firsthand, it's kind of really hit or miss. Like, I've done this about 20 times, if not more, before, so that's probably not going to be seen. So the pickling solution works, and then we were able to wash off most of the black using some steel wool to encourage the fire scale to get off there, and this that should awesome. make it work a little better. So it's gonna turn orange first. I'm gonna pull it away because it transitions after the heat's gone. And that's why I turn it down so I can get a much more um, refined like area. So the more you put it on, the more purple it gets. Which and it's hard to keep that color there. Oh I see it. It's actually working really well actually. And so the, the ends, you'll see the water popped out. So there's not going to be any like nice patina on that. I apologize. It's okay. It's going to look like gross and weird, but that you can always grind off. It's so pretty when you first do it. Oh, yeah. It ah! Blue is really hard to get out, but yeah. see the purple is popping out. I mean, I had one that had a lot of rain one time. It was really exciting. I did one where literally it just stripes across it. Oh, cool. And it, um, I let it sit before I actually put it in here, so it didn't work as well. Yeah, cooling it fast helps, I think, yeah. preserve the color. So I'm gonna go again. I'm gonna use a paper towel. <laughs> just because once you like put it in the water, certain patinas come off. I'm actually gonna rub it a little bit. Actually, that might that might it's be really good. Pretty purple, yeah. 
see like the oranges you kind of got to deal with to get the purples. Yeah. I might. I'm just going to hit it one more time. Should I turn it off? Oh. I should be brushed. Oh, I feel like I can't bring that in school. <laughs> this one's getting yellow. It's kind of cool. yeah. See that? That's what oh, you're I like looking that, for. Yeah. I'm not just like, please don't be too hot. Please don't burn. You want a bed? <laughs> I'm freaking down. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Right. Good. Beauty. I'm not gonna lose it this time. I just went, I like dunk it in slow. Oh. I'm waiting. You dunk it slowly so it doesn't explode. <laughs> You if you dunk it really fast, the water will just shoot up in your face. Yeah. Personal experience. Oh, no. Oh, does no. it feel like face burn? No, it's just like steam and then spurts of water. So it's not like it's going to singe your face off. But it's not hot water. Like it's just kind of gross. Of like marble, face is like all mangled on one side. Like well, you can clear that to be what happened to her, right? <laughs> okay. So I'm not going to bend this today because that's really boring. But I'll just pass it around so you guys can see the patina. Nice. Do you bend it in the vise just pounding with a hammer? Or? Um, I tend to use like, um, you know like how old anvils look yeah. at the end? Yep. We just use like, because my vise okay. has like that on the end. So like so a I just bend nylon it hammer? Yeah, nylon hammer, so rubber hammer. I have okay. one that has both on each side. Okay. 